What's up, guys? Good morning to you all. We're back at it. It's Monday. It is. It's Monday. Sadly, it's Monday, and it's like the most Monday of Mondays ever. I am dragging. I didn't want to get out of bed this morning. I'm having a hard time putting my thoughts together to get this video started. It's not coming easy. It never comes easy, but uh, this morning is more of a struggle than usual. But anyway, we're back in run eight. And we're going to be hauling a 12,000 ton coal train today. We're going to be taking it up to Wasco. We're in Barstow, so we're on the West Coast, right? This is going to be the Barstow to Wasco service uh, that they ran back in the day. I don't think they ran this train anymore. I think it was done away with, but uh, that's what we're going to be doing. It's going to be a multi-part video, right? Like we're going to start out in Barstow and work our way west. Eventually go over to Hatchapi and wind up uh, in Wasco, but uh, should be a fun trip. A little bit of a challenge. Not the heaviest train that goes over to Hatchapi, but uh, definitely a, a, a pretty good little bowling ball, right? In, uh, in other news, a few videos back, I had mentioned something about I had uh, I had the urge to play Madden NFL. We've got to talk about this, okay? Don't get all excited because I don't have Madden NFL right now. I haven't played that game in years, but I do have the urge to play it. And I asked you guys, I said, uh, and I said, leave a comment. Who would you pick up? If you were to play Madden NFL right now, who would you pick up? Leave it in the comments. Someone say go Chiefs. And they go Chiefs, right? Absolutely. What do you guys think of the uh, Travis and Taylor hype? I think it's kind of ridiculous myself. The NFL sees dollar signs, right? Like that's what that's like. They're putting Taylor on their banner. They're, <laughs> they're doing all this stuff. They're trying to get those Swifties to cross over to the NFL. They're trying so hard, right? Like, it's just so blatantly obvious that that whole thing is a marketing scheme to them. They're trying so hard to get them over. They're not going to get any Swifties to watch NFL. Come on. Let's be serious. A Swiftie would not sit through an entire NFL game if you, like, tied them to their chairs. They might, they'll be into the hype. They'll watch snippets. But for the most part, a large majority of the Swifties are going to have like no interest in watching an NFL football game. Well, let's just be serious, right? They're not going to do it. So it's a crazy amount of hype. I'm not a huge Taylor Swift fan. I don't have a thing against her, right? But I'm afraid our boy uh, Travis is going to wind up his song material. How many of you think that's going to happen? Like, how many of you think Travis is going to wind up in a song? Leave me a comment below and tell me. Um, she's got a history of that, right? She's going through a lot of men. She's got a history of, like, dating these guys and then using them as songwriting material. Uh, so it could be money for her. Either way, I think he's going to wind up in a song. Maybe it'll work out. Who knows? But uh, she she does like she's got a history of that right like she's dated several pretty high profile people and they don't work out like they never work out and you know there's a saying if you think everyone around you is an a-hole you might need to look at yourself right like I, I don't know I'm just you know I'm just saying all these dudes aren't working out I don't know. It's ridiculous though, right? It's absolutely and totally ridiculous the hype that is being generated for the double T's, Travis and Taylor. I don't know what to think about that. So you guys leave your opinion down below. Let me know what you think. Am I the only one that thinks that? I don't know. I don't see the Swifties crossing over though. All right, enough about that. Let's go ahead and get started. Some pause this thing. Let's look at our train here. Got a, uh, a, a D9 on the head end, an Ace, uh, ES44, and another D9. Followed by 80, uh, 84 cars. And then way down here on the bottom, we've got. Uh, uh, looks like another D9, another D9. 
and another ace. So pretty good setup. This should handle this train no problem. Uh, if you're not familiar with this train, it actually originates up in um, in Utah on UP. It's actually a UP train. It's uh, it originates in Utah and it's brought down to Yermo by the UP. I think they actually take it to Barstow. Then they hand it off to the uh, BNSF because it's unloaded on the BNSF on the Bakersfield sub up there. So. Uh, I've seen sometimes where they've uh, they've used the UP power, like they put a BNSF leader in the. U I, I think it varies a lot. I'm not really sure, but it's all BNSF today. Uh, I'm trying to think how I want to do this. What is the grade here at Barstow? I think it's relatively flat in these departure uh, inspection tracks, right? I was thinking about just not not setting up any air and like just using the independent. Let's see what it does. Hopefully the bottom won't roll out. It shouldn't. The bottom shouldn't roll out because we got DPU down there. All right, let's line ourselves out here. We're not going to use uh, we're not going to use auto right yet because I don't think this symbol is in the system and he's probably going to send us off like towards Timbuktu. Wait, no, I just said we're not going to use auto spur and I turned it on. Like I told you, it's Monday, right? It's totally Monday. Let's follow the line. North departure. There we go. We got a crossover. Get that one there. We'll eventually turn auto on, just not right now. I think this is good right there. And right there. And we'll go on up. There we go. All right, we're set. I think we're good. Go ahead and give her a few notches, get the headlights going. It's like 5.30 in the morning. We got this thing started. Yeah, 5.30 in the morning. All right, let's ease off the independent here. This she'll start moving. There we go. Yeah, she's moving all right. Let's open our window up so we can get some uh, fresh air. Some of this fresh California desert air. I have to get my caffeine in. I'm not a coffee guy. I just don't like hot drinks. Like, I'm not a fan of hot drinks. Ah, damn, it, oh, nose is itching like crazy, too. I swear, I'm falling apart this morning, guys. I really am. I'm absolutely falling apart 110%. There we go, a little bit. I had to go out and cut our alley. We got an alley behind our house. I may have neglected it a little bit, more than I have in a long time. There's a bunch of these plants back there called goat heads. I don't know if you're, we call them goat heads. I don't know if you guys are familiar with them or not, but they're like the most evil plant ever in the history of plant. They got these stickers on them and they, they're, they're probably about, about that big, the stickers on them. And they are so sharp. Holy cow. Like they'll pierce the bottom of a flip flop. They're so incredibly sharp. They make me itch too. Like if they, if they, if I get stuck with one, like I'll itch like crazy. I don't know if there's something going on or what, but they're so evil. And our alley is like covered in those things. So I went back here and I weeded. I, I like took them down to bare dirt. I'm like, I'm getting rid of these things. Like I, I don't want to, like I don't want to spray a bunch of Roundup back there because of my kids, right? Like I don't want to do. I mean, they don't go back there, but I'd really rather not. So I'm trying to kill these goat heads. I went back there and weed eat them all. I think I'm allergic to them. Like, man, my sinuses went nuts last night after I did that. So yeah, it's the battle against the goat heads. Uh, maybe we'll, uh, maybe we'll win. I hope so. I still got to devise my plan on how I'm going to kill these things because they're so, uh, they're so bad and they get tracked into the house and they get in the carpet and then you step on that thing. And if you guys know what I'm talking about, you feel my pain. Those things are horrible. Like they're absolutely 110% evil. I wish I had one to show you guys. I'll have to find one sometime. They're horrible. All right, we've got a, a diverging. What is this? A diverging approach medium? Maybe something like that. 
We'll keep easing along. This is, uh, says it's a 55 mile an hour train. That's kind of interesting. All the coal trains we had on CSX back in the day, for me, were like 50 mile an hour trains, so. I don't know if that's accurate for, uh, for the BNSF. Yeah, I, I don't know. 15 mile an hour track right here, though. I think it is. Yeah, 15 mile an hour. Um, our DPU is in idle. Oh, we got a fence up. Yeah, that's not cool. We don't need the fence. Let's get that fence down. I think we're going to have to... Oh, man, I really... I don't want to fool that. I really didn't want to separate these guys out. It's, it's amazing that we actually... Okay, there we go. They're at three. Let's do this. <coughs> All right, I think we're good. Yeah, okay, yeah, we're matched up. All right, that's cool. I didn't know that. I didn't know you could take the fence down and your uh, your DPU would kind of match up to what you had set previously. So that's cool. I don't know how I wound up with a fence. Somehow. I guess I was messing around and wound up with it somehow. Yeah, we're getting really fast too, man. 15 mile an hour track. Spurs already busting 17 mile an hour out of there. It's only two mile an hour, it's okay. It's not the end of the world. Let's just keep easing on down here. This is a uh, pretty fun train. A little challenging, not too bad though. It's really not. Like if you can figure out how to balance this thing down uh, to hatch me, you've got it made like you're golden. It's really, it's not like even balancing it down to grade. It's not, uh, it's not hard. Like I, I take for granted that a lot of people like know how to do this stuff. And there are people out there that don't like, they don't know. Like they think either you're supposed to use all dynamics going down the hill or something like that. All dynamics, you're going to fail all day, every day. So when you go over to HP, what I like to do is, um, you know, you crest the grade. It's kind of a gentle crest there. You're going to be running pretty good. Uh, come out of the throttle very easily. Come out of the throttle. You're going to be running pretty good too. Probably about 40, 45 mile an hour. Gradually back out of the throttle from eight to idle. And then gradually go into the uh, dynamic brake, gather up your slack, and you got to slow down forward to 23 because they got 23 mile an hour speed restriction down to hatch speed. Oddest speed ever, right? 23. But I think one railroad back in the day wanted 25, the other one wanted 20, so they went for 23 or something like that. It was uh, Santa Fe in the Southern Pacific, right? So uh, I start getting into the dynamics, slow down for the 23, and I'll just stay in them. And as you crest the grade, you'll start going deeper and deeper into dynamics until you get up to about B6. And um, at that point, I'll grab like a minimum set. And then from that point, oh, okay, when you grab your minimum set, then you gotta start backing back out of your dynamics, right? And then I'll just grab two, <clears throat> two pounds at a time. Pardon me. Two pounds at a time until you get to 10 pounds. And then with a 10 pound set on this train, you probably go down about B4 maybe. So yeah, it's, it's pretty, you'll see it. When we eventually get up there, you'll see. Uh, it's not bad. It's not hard at all, really. And then at that point, it's just a lot of fiddling with your dynamic brakes because your curves are uh, your curves are going to be binding your train. I don't think a lot of people realize like how much an effect a curve has on the speed of your train. So curves will be binding you. You'll get slow in curve. Like if you're going through a lot of S curves and stuff like that, you'll get slow. Of course, the grade is going to be constantly changing. You know, it's not going to be the same all the way down. So that's basically it. it. It's it's really it's not hard. It's a lot of fun. It, it's the going up that I don't like as much. It's not too bad going um, going west. You know, you basically the bulk of your grade is like from just north of Mojave to Cameron, and then up. You know, by monolith, you're running pretty good through there. It's not too bad. So it, it's not like just hours of just you know 
16, 17 mile an hour. All right, let's see what it looks like here. Yeah, let's go ahead. Let's get auto on. And what is 3213? Let's call auto up. Let's go channel 32. There we go. All right. 13. DTM it. <clears throat> He's probably going to tell us to wait. I'd be willing to bet. Is he going to talk to us? You want to talk to his auto? There we go. Let's request a light. See what he says. He may give us a light from here. Usually it's got to be at a control point. Uh, you're already cleared. Proceed on signal indication. Uh, he's getting snippy with us already. Like we've done got on his bad side. All right. Track speed now is 40. Be a little more throttle. Like I said, we're not going to get too terribly crazy with it. I think it's a little bit of a downhill from here. What is this, the Mojave River or something up here, this crossing? I'm not honestly sure. I thought maybe that was it, but uh, maybe not. A little bit of a downhill through here. This is a crack trailer, right? <laughs> it's like the Breaking Bad trailer out here. You see it sitting there. Yeah, this is Breaking Bad mobile home there. It's like the meth, the, <laughs> the meth uh, factory out in the middle of the desert. All right, what's our uh, what's our speed doing? Yeah, we're uh, we got to be careful here because we're going to be going back up on the uphill side. We'll let that slack run in our bottom run into us here. Uh, give her a notch. Maybe we can kind of stay ahead of it a little bit here. I'm all right. I'm okay. We're running a little bit fast. Like if we can keep ahead of the slack, that's fine. Oh, like I said a few mile an hour isn't going to make that big of a deal. I, I take up to three, up to three, and then I start worrying about it. We shouldn't get too terribly fast, so. Like I said, this is just my thoughts on running in run eight. Like, don't take them as the gospel. You you got to figure out like what works for you and what you are uh, you're comfortable with. I'm not like a rule book jockey. I don't do all this stuff like they do in real life. And, you know, it just it doesn't interest me. Like I I just I kind of I just want to run a train with how I enjoy is basically like there's some things that I might kind of follow along with as far as the rules, but um, uh, I'm not a stickler for it. Right? Like I think if, if you're too much of a stickler, it kind of takes the fun out of it a little bit. So I mean, it's not like we're going to be getting virtual letters or anything like that. All right, there we go. What's our board here? Say 70. That means we'll be able to do 55. She's actually maintaining speed a lot better than I thought she would coming out of that dip back there. I guess it wasn't as much of a dip as I thought it would be. Like this is the Mojave sub on the BNSF. I know it kind of undulates a little bit. Like it's not like crazy, crazy, but it definitely it has a few spots in it. And I'm not like I'm not super familiar with this route. I've run it. We've run it before. We did a video a good while back where we ran this. All right, I think we're good. I think we're good right here. We're running a little faster than what I would like, but I think it'll be all right. It is. It's maintaining that speed really good. Like, I'm surprised. All right, we got a flash in yellow.
Does that approach me? You. All right, let's back out, Carla. I kept thinking she was going to kind of slow us down a little bit, but uh, she just never did. Yeah, there's just not as much of a climb coming out of that that drop, that uh, that bridge back there than I thought there would be. I thought it was a pretty good dip there. Uh, we got a flash in yellow, so I guess Otto's still got to line us up. I'm not sure exactly what he's doing. Got the approach medium. I'm going to endorse my uh, food club colas. You guys hook me up, all right? I need that endorsement. This is a cheapo generic Cokes, and they're very, <laughs> like, they're less, like, they're not even half the cost, half the price of a 12-pack of Cokes. Like, those things have gotten ridiculous, man. They're like, what? Here, where I live, they're like eight or, like, between eight and nine dollars a 12-pack or something like that. Like, it's ridiculous. Ridiculous how expensive they've gotten. Man, it blows my mind. I couldn't even imagine some other areas. But uh, yeah, we found these things like there's there's some kind of generic brand and they're actually really good. Like I kind of like them a little better. Like to me, they're a little sweeter than a Coke. Like to me, they're more like an old Coke than Coke is now, right? We were growing up in uh, Alabama and Georgia. Czech Cola was the thing. How many of you guys are familiar with Czech? Check cola. You used to love their black cherry. Their black cherry was off the hook. Man, this thing just does not want to slow down. Like I keep notching out of the throttle to uh, to get her to slow down a little bit, and she just doesn't want to do it. All right, there's our approach. I don't know how far on the other side that signal is, so. We're going to go ahead and come out. What is that? Uh, I don't think that's not the one we need. It's going to be yes, yeah, 65, 13. Okay. Now 65. We'll just kind of let her coast along a little bit. I don't like just free rolling like this. Like things happen when you free roll, like your slacks, like running in and out and like, I either like to be pulling on it a little bit or pushing against it, you know, with the dynamics, but she seems okay right now. As soon as we get by the light, we'll uh, we'll call up Otto. We'll have to go around there looking out. Oh, never mind. We can see it, actually. You know what? Let's get into that. All right. See what happens. All right, let's go to B2, gather our slack up. All right, Otto, sometime today, please. Are you on? Are you talking to us? Like, oh, he's not even on. How did he get turned? Oh, okay, he was turned on the other route. Yeah. Never mind. Sorry, I totally goofed that up. Proceed. Oh, he told me to proceed, and then we. Uh oh. All right, we got to clear. Let's come out of this. Yeah, I was trying to avoid stopping. I didn't really want to if we didn't have to. I mean, this isn't that bad of a location to stop. Some of these spots, I would not want to stop this train at all. Like uh, going through like uh, Warren and Cameron, man, that would be a pain. Definitely Warren. Warren would be the worst spot. That big curve to the like to the left, and I think there's another one. It goes back to the right a little bit. Like those S curves there. Oh, that would be killer. Like that's where it really drags you down at. All right, bro. Let's get out of dynamics. Let's go. All right, since we bunched her up, we're going to be really easy on the uh, on the throttle here. All right, 
that's good. Let's go ahead and open her up some more. We shouldn't have to worry about it too much with the DPU on the bottom because they are helping us out. That's what it looks like. See what she's doing back there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's fine. We'll be all right. All right, let's see if we get her back up to 55. I think today's vid, we'll try to get... Um, We'll try to get halfway, maybe, maybe a little further, on the uh, on on the Mojave sub for the BNSF. So about halfway to Mojave, maybe a little further than that. The next one will will climb out of uh, Mojave up through Warren, and then I think the next one after that will crest um, to HP, and maybe that's where we'll do our uh, that's we'll like focus on the transition to downhill. All right, we're good. There's traffic out here. We do have trains to meet. There's not a lot. I took a, a list. 24 hours on a Tehachapi sub. Someone did it for seven days. I guess they camped out by the Tehachapi sub for seven days. Or I don't know how they did it, but they got 24 hours of trains on a Tehachapi sub for seven days straight. So I took one of those days and uh, made all the trains, or most of them. I haven't made all of them yet. It's going to take us a while to get towards the end anyway. But um, and kind of set it up, and then I'm I'm going through like he says, well, it oh uh, five hundred hours. This train came through, and then it oh. Uh, 630 this one came through so an hour and a half later so I'm trying to kind of space them out like that you know slow up a little bit here I guess this is uh, what is this is this Jim Gray or Hinkle I can't remember yeah I can't remember to be honest all right, let's back uphill. Let's try to outrun that slag. Where are we at? Hinkley. Hinkley, not Hinkle. Hinkley. Then Jim. Okay. Man, I'm telling you guys, this train is wanting to run. Like, I'm a little surprised. Like, she's wanting to go. I, I thought we would kind of have to, like, coax it along a little bit. But, man, she's, like, she's running. Great here, 0.5. I think there's some grades between here and, and Mojave that are like upwards, maybe just a little shy of 1%. Maybe, something like 0 0.7, 0 0.8, something like that. Beautiful morning in the desert, right? That's not too bad. Conductor's over there awake. That's pretty cool. This is the OG route. If you're not familiar with Run 8, this was the very first route. Of course, this one comes with a game. So I ran over it quite a few times back in the day. Not as much here recently. Like I said, we did the video a while back where we... Uh, we took something, some kind of uh, vehicle train or intermodal train or something uh, eastbound from like Mojave to Barstow. And then I did the grain train from uh, Tehachapi down the hill. And we did that. But uh, we've yet to do a full run. So that's what this one is going to be. Like I said, full run, multiple videos. This is going to be multiple, multiple videos to eventually get to Wasco. We'll do the whole nine yards. We'll take the coal train up there. We'll uh, we'll tie it down and then uh, we'll run the power back to uh, Barstow because I don't think they left the power up there sitting and wait. Like it takes them days to unload this train. Like they have to unload it one hopper at a time. 
<laughs> so I, I think what they did is they took the power back to uh, to Bakersfield. I think I said Barso in Bakersfield. A little bit of a downhill here. Looks like it picks back up in the curve though, maybe. Looks like it. Yeah, it looks like either it. Sometimes it's hard to read. Like sometimes it's hard to read the grades because you don't know. Are you coming down so steep that where it looks like it's coming back up is actually just flattening out, you know? Like sometimes it's a little bit of a trick. All right, it's coming back up. We could split the DPU, right? Like we could be playing with all that, but I really, I don't want to fool with that. It'll be fine. Like I said, I don't generally sweat a few mile an hour over. It's going to have, man, did you just see, <clears throat> we just had some slack run in. I cannot talk today. Like my throat is back. Almost back the way it was before. I hope I don't get laryngitis again. Alright, got it clear. Try to slow her up a little bit. Yeah, we had pretty good slack run in back there. Let's check out our conductor. Too bad if you didn't have a good slack run in if he'd be in the floor, right? Like that would be hilarious. All right, there we go. Let's open it up a little bit more. Yeah, so we got one train to meet on this trip. They're going to be like, if I finish setting it up like it was in real life on that one particular day, they're going to be about an hour apart. There are some that are closer, but it's like one an hour or something like that. Yeah, I thought this train would be way more draggy on this sub. Like I said, she's just flat out wanting to go. Maybe we might have to put some air under her or something. Just keep messing with the throttle. Throttle modulation just a little bit at a time. You know, it's just, you kind of feel what it's doing. Yeah, she's starting to slow up a little bit. Yeah, you see what the grade does, right? Like, there's a lot of dips. There's a lot of up and down. I know the clear. Of course, BNSF doesn't call the clear. CSX calls everything, BNSF doesn't. They call uh, less than clear. Wow, this dip here, open crawl a little bit. Now I was trying to think how we could do it. If we split the DPU, like maybe we could run the DPU with like a notch or two more than what we have on the head end if you wanted to try to keep it bunched up or we could run it a notch or two less to keep it stretched. Maybe, I'm not really sure. I'm not a DPU guy, so I know there's a lot of people that know way more about it than I do. I was trying to think like how you could, like how you could control your train with your DPU. And of course, if you wanted to get real fancy with it, you could split it and have like the head in and power or the head in and dynamic and the bottom in power and all that kind of stuff. But. I've honestly, I've never, I've never seen a need for that. Not on any of the routes I run. Maybe some of you guys have. All right, on a point seven five here. I do. There's some pretty steep grades here. Got another clear. Let's go ahead and cheat. Let's see what we got going on. Uh, 
We got the Rick LPC, the vehicle train, uh, Richmond to a logistics park. Based on a real train, like to the T. Um, I guess we're going to meet him in Boron, maybe. That's a 70 mile an hour train, so he's going to be moving pretty good. We're going by Jim Gray, it looks like. I don't know, he may hold us at Jim Gray, honestly. I hope he doesn't. Like, if he holds us at Jim Gray, that's going to be... You need to take us to Boron. Come on, dude. Take me to Boron. Don't make me wait there. Don't do me dirty. You got another clear. Now she's a little bit draggy on that point seven back there, right? Like, guys crossing up here yeah talking about Madden the the game I still really miss a lot is NCAA football I love that game I had like Ameri and I had several of those <laughs> we used to play all the time we used to play yeah believe it or not we used to uh, we used to play those a lot like we do we did a lot of like everything was co-op like we did a lot of co-op playing on there one multiple multiple national championships like we were dominating in that game we dominated so hard in that game it was crazy those were the days right I wonder will we ever see another NCAA football it'd be nice All right, kind of flat through here so we can back off a little bit. I'm trying to think what other games we played. PlayStation 2, we had this little game called NASCAR Rumble. We played it all the time too. It was, it was so much fun. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that. But uh, we played it a ton. We've actually, we've got that game in our PlayStation 2. It's packed up in a closet somewhere. It's been in a closet for years. I almost kind of want to dig it out. Of course, we got our PlayStation 4. I hardly ever, I, I hardly play anything on it. Like, I, I really, I don't. I played Red Dead Redemption on it. Or uh, Red Dead 2. I think that's it. Like, my kids play way more than I do. All right, another clear. It's kind of a long stretch between sidings here. Yeah, I've never been that much of a console guy. There's some games that I like on console. Make sure we get on that defect detector. Yeah, I've, I've never been like a huge console guy. Um, I've always been PC. Like I had Nintendo, Super Nintendo, you know, all that stuff back in the day. But uh, I was always more of a PC guy. Nintendo was more uh, like when I was growing up, that was more like a sleepover thing. Like I remember I had a friend I'd go spend a night at his house and um, we would play Contra all night long. Like all night long, we would stay up and play Contra. It was a blast. It was so much fun. All right, looks like back downhill a little bit here. Hard to tell. Look like it might've dropped off. Maybe not, it's saying 0.2. Do you guys, if you played Contra, do you remember the Contra cheat? The up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, B, A, select, start. I think that was it. I think that was a cheat. You get 30 lives. 
Yeah, we cleared that game. We cleared that game so many times. It was ridiculous. Playing Contra and watching the movie uh, Running uh, Running Man with Arnold Schwarzenegger. I remember that. Like I remember that at his house. Like it's it's crazy. The weirdest things you remember, right? Remember that. It it seems like it seems like yesterday, but like years ago at the same time. It's kind of weird. And, and the unfortunate part about it is that friend passed away. That was like one of my classmates that uh, uh, passed away pretty young. And it's really just kind of sad. All right, let's see. Another clear. So I guess we're going on. I guess we're going to go to Boron, right? Going number eight. You notice I went multiple notches there. Like we're free rolling, we're rolling good. The amps are low, so you know I took it multiple notches. I like that. I think it, as long as you know where to apply it and how to use it, it works out. You know I went back and I looked at an old Milwaukee Road uh, air brake and train handling rule book from like 1970 74 I think and even back then they were preaching that whole one notch at a time thing though I don't think like I don't think a lot of that was regularly practiced so you know I know it wasn't on my railroad even later but um it's funny that rule book was kind of vague in a lot of areas like it's it's still it kind of left a lot of stuff to the engineer like it specifically it said something about taking slack in the rule book but it was kind of interesting it said you could but it didn't tell you how to do it right like that was a passed down thing We're still good. Pretty flat through here, looks like. Actually, it's uphill, 0 0.65. That's the thing about desert railroading. There's not much to look at, right? Same East Coast railroading, too. If you really want to think about it, like desert railroading, you look at the desert. East Coast railroading, especially in the Southeast, my railroad, you looked at trees. Like, I was, that was basically it. You know, I, I see people, like, they complain about Run 8. They say, well, it was nothing but a tunnel of trees. Like, it's nothing but a little... Like, that's what it was. I, I mean, it was just trees. And you couldn't see anything beyond the trees. You couldn't see anything 10 feet into the trees because they were so thick and overgrown and, like, had so much, you know, briars and honeysuckle and just all this stuff. Like, it was like a jungle almost, really. You couldn't see anything back in there. I remember during the winter time when the leaves would come off the trees, you could see more. Like you could see further back in there. I remember seeing these old abandoned gold mines. Like during the summer, you would never know they were there. But during the winter time, you know, 50, 100 feet off the tracks, you would see them. You could see them back in there. But Okay, what we got here? Still in that point six five. Yeah, this train's kind of the slow boat to China compared to the Z trains, the seventy mile an hour trains. We have to keep an eye out because we'll be we'll be doing something at Boron. I don't know who's going to go in, but probably us, maybe. All right, another clear. How long we go? About an hour. Yeah, this will be about an hour, maybe a little longer. Let's go ahead and see. Yeah, we're going in at Boron, so um, we may... We're not, yeah, we're not halfway yet. We may go a little further past Boron. That Richmond LPC train is going to be there waiting on us by the time we get up there. So technically, hopefully, we'll do an in and out. We won't have to wait.
We may go to Silt. I think Silt's about the halfway. The halfway point. Right, Silt? Hinkley, Jim Gray, Boron, Silt, and then we got Edwards, Bissell, Sandboard. Yeah, I think we'll do Silt. We'll call it there. I was thinking we were coming up on the distance to uh, Boron, but I guess that's not it. I don't know why. What is this? Where are we at exactly? Oh, we're just now coming by Jim Gray. I thought we were... Um... Man, I don't know what I was thinking. I thought we were uh, between Jim Gray and Boron. Honestly, it probably would have been better for the dispatcher to hold us here. Like, well, that vehicle train is moving 70 mile an hour. It wouldn't have taken him long to get over here. We're just, we're a little bit draggy compared to him. I mean, we're making good speed. We're doing good, but. All right, looks like it's going to drop off a little bit here. Yeah, I don't have a map. I, I don't have anything up. No map, no grade pro profile, no nothing. So we're just kind of winging it. So yeah, it looks like it kind of dips into the siding a little bit and then climbs back out maybe. It's like it might flatten out just a little bit and then climb back out. See what this does. Yeah, I really I don't want to intervene if I have to. Like I'd rather just kind of go with it. I'm just kind of watch, keep an eye on our speed a little bit. He's going to get a little bit fast, but like I said, it, it's not the end of the world. Right, so we got up to 55, so I've been running this like a 50 mile an hour train. I keep forgetting it's 55. Like 55 just seems like an odd speed to me. I'm trying to think what the grain train speeds are. Are they 50 or 55 too? Yeah, dispatcher's gonna be hating on us because we've been dragging along at 50 this whole time. He's not gonna like that. All right, so next stop, Boron. We'll go in at Boron. That guy's gonna be up there waiting, so hopefully it'll just be an in and out. It won't be a problem. scooch over a little bit here there you go get a little bit of a view there that's good running train good running train good route to run on through here not it's not bad at all it's really just not I think the fits is much harder to uh, to run on with like a heavy train than this route. I mean, even with Tehachapi, like, uh, you know, once you set it up, it's really, it's not a big deal. Like it's not much work at all, really, if you think about it, it's not a lot of work. I, I think, honestly think the, the fits is like, for running is probably more advanced uh, running because of all the dips, you know, the dips and the, uh, hogbacks and stuff like that. Like you're constantly uh, working your train, right? All right, there we go. 55. We finally got up to 55. I totally forgot about that. The dispatcher's probably cussing us under his breath because we so draggy.
Yeah, the engineer I worked with back in the day, the one it used to like to run a little bit over, at least a few mile an hour over everywhere, he always said, you get uh, you get much better trips with your dispatcher if you keep your speed on point versus a train that's just kind of um, kind of draggy. Like you know, some guys were the opposite. Like some guys were a, a few mile an hour or more under the speed limit everywhere. Like they just didn't get in a hurry. Like they just drug along everywhere. And so his thinking was like, if you're on a train that just kind of drags along and doesn't really get over the road, like he's way more likely to stick you in a hole and have you waiting on someone than to keep moving you along. Like he's not as likely to set up those close meets, you know, if you're kind of draggy, like he's just going to stick you in the hole and let you wait it out. But if you're moving, if you're moving good and you're on point and you're getting over the road, like he, he, I guess the dispatcher would feel more comfortable like getting closer meets, right? Yeah, maybe that's true. I, I know that guy was a dang good engineer, 30 years of service. And I honestly, I don't think I ever ever had a bad trip with him i i don't think like i'm trying to think of anything that may have happened or just having a bad trip and i really i don't i i don't think so he's really just that good you know there's like there's some engineers that are like they just know it it's like it's in their blood like they could do it they could literally do it with their eyes closed. Like they know, they know the trains, they know the territory. It's just, it's second nature to them, right? Like they just, they just know it. And then there's others that like, you just weren't that comfortable with, right? Like they just didn't seem they didn't seem that sure of themselves, you know, like they lacked the confidence to, uh, to do it. But, uh, the ones that could do it in their sleep course, you know, 20, 30 years of service, like it was a problem. They're really good. I definitely, I work, you know, it, it ran the gamut. I work with uh, a lot that were like exceptional engineers and I work with some that were just absolute trash, like they had no business doing it. This is the way it was, right? I'm sure any of you guys that are real life railroaders, like y'all, you have that that range too, right? Like, you know, I, I definitely, I had some that um, I kind of dreaded working with, to be honest, like I really did. Like when they would call you up and tell you what you were doing and you'd ask them who's my engineer and they would tell you you'd just be like no <laughs> no no whether they just weren't a very good engineer or sometimes you just didn't get along like usually i i got along with like everyone on the railroad i don't for the most part i think i was pretty liked you know i didn't i didn't have problems with anyone but there were a few engineers that, uh, let's just say they made for long trips. Like they were very quiet trips, right? Like <laughs> they're very quiet trips. Nothing worse than being stuck on a train for 12 hours with someone that you don't like talking to, right? Like, or you just don't. There's only like one or two, maybe one or two like that, that I, uh, I didn't get along with, but it's part of it. You can't get along with everyone, right? All right, we gotta be coming up to that meet sometime. There we go, approach diverging. I'm trying to think how, I probably use dynamics. I don't think we're gonna need power, like power isn't gonna be that critical. And all we gotta do is slow down to 40.
There's another meth house, right? <laughs> another meth trailer. I think those are trailers that had the uh, aluminum pole in the windows if you look at them. Maybe. I can't remember. A little bit. Yeah, a little bit of a grade right here. Let's go back into it. Yeah, about half a percent. We're down to 50. I'm okay with that. Then we got to just like shed 10 more mile an hour by the time we get to the siding. So it should be okay. speed's coming on down anyway I'm trying I, I just I, I need to know what the grades like going through there you know like is it down into the siding and then back out like I'm trying to think if I'm gonna need power like all we gotta do is just yeah I think we'll be okay we should be able to just do this with throttle modulation I was kind of wondering, like, do I need dynamics to kind of hold the speed going into the siding or can we just ride with it? And that's just, that's like, that's just me not knowing the territory, right? Like, I don't know what to expect. It looks like... Nah, I don't know. It looks pretty flat. I think we'll be all right. That signal's a lot further away than what you'd think. I thought it was closer. It's still a mile away. Yeah, we're fine. It looks relatively flat up here from what I can tell, so we shouldn't really need to do much of anything. Just go in and out. Well, I say that's a little bit of a drop right here, so we might need some dynamic. Yeah, let's go ahead. Let's get at him. Yeah, see, it looks kind of flat, but it's really not. It's 0.5 down. Ooh, a little slack run in there. Ease up on spur. I keep forgetting with this cold, need to be a little bit easier with it. I never forget when I was cubbing, I had to catch a cold train with a Fitzgerald crew one time. One of the few times that I ever worked with one of those guys or any of them. And uh, I caught him coming back from Atlanta and uh, we were on a cold train and it's a relatively young engineer and an old head conductor that was like old as dirt, man. He'd been out there for a long time. All right, there's our vehicle train. Nice. And uh, something had happened. And the slack ran in like really freaking hard on us, like real hard. <laughs> and the conductor, without missing a beat, let out an expletive. I'm not going to say it, but he, he said the expletive and he's like, are you trying to kill us? Like he dang near put us in the floorboard and then engineer came all this explanation like I'm sorry I thought you know whatever I totally get it like you know it happens it happens right like things are gonna happen all right there's our vehicle train
Nice. All right, let's gather up a little bit more here. And there's a boron shoving platform there. That's cool. I hated those things. They got in the way. They really just did. They got in the way. Like, they were more hassle than, than good. I mean, I guess in some instances they were okay, but... For the most part, if we had a shoving platform available, we didn't take it with us, to be honest. Like, I can think of a couple of times we took one with us, but usually we didn't. Like, it was kind of a headache. All right, let's slow up for our exit here. Yeah, she want to run this half percent grade and it's straight as an arrow. Back out a little bit more before we go for this switch here. Nice, there you go. All right, first meet down. Richmond to Logistics Park. Let's count this off. We'll go over to Silt. Silt will be it for us. We'll call it a day at Silt. All right, looks like we'll climb back out here. At least it's flat. It looks like it's kind of just wanting to climb out, but it's still relatively flat here. Yeah, it looks like it's up a little bit. Let's go ahead and come out of dynamics. We'll pull on it some. Like I said, sometimes looking at it, it'll trick you. Like, is it going up and then dropping off or is it flat and dropping off? Like, sometimes it's really hard to tell. All right, since we had her all bunched up, we're gonna be real easy pulling out on her. I don't want to break my record of not getting a knuckle, right? See, it's actually dropping off more, so it never did actually climb up. We keep getting that DPU error. Oh, um, yeah, I've never seen that happen before. Uh, it's still in B1. What is up with that? Yeah, what is up with that? I, I don't know. Yeah, we just lost it completely. Yeah, I don't know, guys. Uh, we just totally, we lost our, our DPU connection. We had an error. We had a failure, like some kind of a failure going on here. And I, 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 I don't know what to do to fix this. Like, I really don't. I don't know what to do to fix this. Yeah, we've had a failure. I don't know. I don't know if we can drag this thing to silt the way it is. Maybe. Yeah, our radio comms failed. Like we lost radio comms completely. Yeah, we sure did. Um. I'm trying to remember the uh, the controls for this. I think it's completely failed, guys. Like, I can't even get it to do anything. Yeah, I can't even get it to do anything. 
Like, I wish it would just go idle. I, I don't, I thought it was supposed to do that. Like, if you had a comms failure or something, aren't they supposed to just go idle? I've never had this before. I have never seen this before. Now, I, I, granted, I'm not a DPU guy, right? And I don't run on the West Coast a lot, so there's just no need to use DPU, but... This is silt coming up here, so I think, I mean, we're going to end it here anyway, but what we'll do is we'll stop. And I've got to figure out what exactly do we want to do to uh, fix this problem. Maybe I could pick another DPU on the engine, on the consist, right? Like... Yeah, we'll just, we'll go on the silt. That's crazy. I've never had that before. Yeah, let's go into dynamic. We lost comms. Yeah, we totally lost comms. Something failed on that on that unit. And we totally lost our connection. Yeah, that really, that totally surprised me. All right, well, let's get her ready to stop up here. We'd be calling the dispatcher telling we got a, uh, a problem with our DBU. Maybe they could send a rapid responder, right? Yeah, we may need to, uh, we might grab some air for this too. Because we don't have any braking action. We don't have any dynamic action going on in the bottom. Like, it's just stuck. Yeah, this isn't good, guys. <laughs> this isn't good. I was totally caught off guard. Totally, totally caught off guard on this. I'm trying to think, what? Do I, how do I want to do this? Like, do I want to let go of the air or, cause we went pretty deep in the air. Cause it wasn't, it wasn't doing anything at all for a minute. Like it didn't seem like it wanted to stop. Let's go ahead and let go. I think we're good now. Yeah, I'm really surprised that didn't go idle. Like, I always assumed those were, like, if there was a connection error or something, that they would just go idle, but it's not. Like, it just totally got stuck. What's our grade through here? 0.19 down, not bad. Yeah, you guys that are running, guys, leave me a comment down below. Let me know if you ever had, had a, uh, a DPU failure. Like, this is totally, completely new to me. So, I got to figure out, like... I don't know. I, I kind of want to play this out like real life. Maybe we could use another one as a DPU, like as to calm with, but. Ooh, that slack's running in and out like crazy. Are we clear on the bottom? Yeah, you could, you could hear it in dynamic, right? Yeah, you could totally hear it. That is so wild. I never expected that in a million years. Yeah, now it's completely X'd out. Like, what is going on with this thing? We'll see. We'll go back there and look in a minute. Yeah, we completely lost that unit. Like, something just completely failed. I don't know what. But uh, if something did fail, like, we need another unit. Like, there's no way. There's no way we're going to make it. I'm honestly like, this is out of all the videos that I've done. We've never had a failure. Yeah, we've never had a failure in game, guys. Like, this is a first. Like, we've had hot boxes and stuff like that, but we've never just had, like, a unit go down or something happen.
All right, let's get ready to stop up here. This would happen on a Monday, right? It is Monday. And we just had something fail, so yeah. All right, let's just keep easing on up here. We'll get ready to stop in just a second here. Let's try to let the air pump back up a little bit. All right, yeah, let's go ahead. Go ahead and stop. Yeah, dispatcher wouldn't be happy about this either. I mean, it is what it is. There's nothing you do about it, but... Yeah, that sucks. We're out in the middle of nowhere, too. Like, I don't even know how we would pick up more power. I mean, like, we could wait here. And uh, another train could go by and leave us an engine. And, yeah. Man, yeah, this would be an ordeal. This would be a big deal if it's, like, down and out for the count. Okay, we're stopped. Let's do uh, full independent. Let's, uh, let's come out of dynamics. And yeah, we got to do that. Now let's center it. Okay. Uh, let's get down and walk, I guess. It's one of the few times the engineer walks, right? I guess the conductor could go back there if he wanted to check the DPU out. I mean, we could just like transport back there if we wanted to. Alright, this one is a DPU lead. Everything's okay, really? Everything's okay on that one as well. Really? Everything's okay, so what happened? Like, how did we... Yeah, I don't know, guys. How did we lose our DPU? Like, I'm at a loss. I don't, I don't know what's going on with it. Dynamic brakes, engine oil, alternator, fuel filter, turbo water, air compressor oil, fuel pump. Like, there's not even anything for comms to fail, right? Like, why did this thing fail? DPU lead. Let's see if we can get it back. Let's see if we can get it back. Is it our unit? Like, what is going on? I don't. I don't understand. It's good. What does this one say? Yeah, they should all be good. Like, I I don't... Yeah, I don't know, guys. I'm at a loss, but we're going to leave this right here. And um, either we'll get someone from Barstow at the shop to come look at it or rapid responder or something and try to get this figured out for the next video. But all the power seems to be good. We just lost... Um, We've totally lost calm with the uh, with the DPU. Like it's X'd out now. I don't know. Leave me a comment below if you guys have ever run into this because this is a first to me. Like I'm at a loss. I have no clue. We're sitting out in the middle of the desert. Like yeah, this isn't good. Uh, anyway, that's gonna do it for this one. Hope y'all enjoyed. If you did, be sure to hit that like, subscribe, ring that bell. Leave me a comment. Be sure to share the video because sharing is caring. Always helps out. Love all of you, and uh, we'll catch you on the rails next time. Peace. Powerful. I don't think. I on the brakes if you're not sitting down you are now <laughs> no no big cat no <laughs> stop oh no 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 kitty go uh-uh no uh -uh.